I've already covered the top 10 ugliest buildings in Stockholm, so it's time for something more traditional. These are the top 10 most beautiful buildings in Stockholm. This is Östermalmshallen. It's a marketplace with foods from all over the world. Sounds interesting. Well, sucks to be you, because I'm just talking about the architecture today. It opened up in 1888, with the King Oscar II present for the opening. And it was built extremely quickly, in just six months. I really like the red brick exterior, and all the details are magnificent. Oh, and it's a little bit hard to see from down here, but at the very top is the Hermes hat, the symbol of trade. I think it's a really nice detail. The lovely house behind me is called the Nordstedt building. And yep, that's what it says on the building as well, in big letters. It's located on the island of Nobility, and it's actually the only privately owned building on that island. The oldest parts of the Nordstedt building is from the 1700s. It was renovated in 1857 in a Råbau style, and that just means tiles, as far as I can tell, bricks and tiles. But uh, I like it. I like the look of this building. It's uh, like a small castle in the center of the city. Oh, and as an added bonus, next to that house is Strömsborg, another cool little house on a very tiny island. Nowadays you can reach it by a bridge, but back in the olden days, the only way to get there was by boat. Strömsborg used to have a restaurant, a spa, and be a place for people to hang out. If they had a boat to get there, that is. This is the Royal Dramatic Theatre. It was built by King Gustav III in 1788. Gustav III was a really theatre-interested king. One of the first things he did after his coronation was to throw out the French-speaking troupe and replace it with a Swedish-speaking theatre troupe. Unfortunately, this isn't the original building from 1788. It's a new one that was built in 1908, in a Wiener Jugend style. It really is quite marvelous, with the marble exterior and the intricate carvings and the gold details. The gold plating was actually added in 2008 for the 100 year anniversary for the new building. Now you know. I can't just have old buildings, I must have some contemporary architecture as well. And isn't this fitting? This is the new architectural school building at the Royal Institute of Technology. And I really like it. It's pretty ironic though, since the ugliest building in Stockholm, the very first spot at the list, was the old architectural school building. But they sure made up for it with this one. This was built between 2013 and 2015, but unfortunately that means that I don't have many interesting tales to tell about the building. It's not like the ones from the 18th, 19th and 20th century. But who knows, maybe in a hundred years people will have really juicy tales to tell about this building. So stay tuned! <laughs> In a very central and very trendy location, you find the Danelius Kahuset, Danelius House basically. It's also called the Flatiron House because of its shape, and it's deemed by Stockholm city to be of high cultural value. And it's located in Stureplan, a trendy place filled with nightclubs and the hip people, so it's a complete waste of a culturally significant house to be in this location. Even more of a shame is that there's an overhyped nightclub called the Spy Bar located in that building. How do I know that it's overhyped? Well, I haven't been there, I couldn't get in, so I assume it's overhyped. The house was built at the turn of the 20th century, and its intended use was luxurious apartments. But it was almost torn down in 1964. A guy called Per Lindeberg took the initiative to protest against tearing down the house. And obviously he succeeded. So thank you, Per. Laurinska huset, the Laurin house, was built in 1891. And it was praised for its choice of materials and harmonic composition with the surroundings. It's a huge apartment building with 120 rooms. The building got its name after the art historian Carl Gustav Laurin, who moved in here 1892. He lived there until he died in 1940. The house is not just pretty, but the apartments get an amazing view over central Stockholm. So yeah, not too shabby. I wouldn't mind living here. 
This big and awesome house behind me is the government house in Stockholm. And like so many other impressive buildings, it was built in the late 19th century. As you can obviously tell, it's built in a late renaissance, possibly neo-baroque style. Nah, I'm just messing with you. I'm pretending that I know anything about this. At the top, you can see four statues of people representing the four estates in Sweden back then. So nobility, priests, uh, burghers and farmers. And at the very top, you can see Mother Svea, Mother Sweden, crowning it all. Watch over us, mom. We need it. This is Stockholm City Hall, where the Nobel Banquet is held every year. It took 15 years to construct this building, and the grand opening was on June 23rd in 1923. They wanted the opening of City Hall to be exactly 400 years after King Gustav Vasa entered Stockholm. The problem is, they missed by one day. King Gustav Vasa entered Stockholm on June 24, so yeah, Swedish precision, well done. This is easily one of Stockholm's most Instagrammable places. I love these arches and the view is spectacular. The inside is really interesting as well and they have lots of famous halls like the Blue Hall, the Golden Hall, the Vault of the Hundred. But I'll have to tell you more about that some other time because we have more buildings to look at. This is Villa Lusthusporten, a merchant villa built in 1873, located on Royal Djurgården. Back in the olden days, all of this used to be hunting grounds, and there was a gazebo located here, close to the gates leading into the hunting grounds. And that's actually how the house got its name, Villa Lusthusporten. That's the Swedish translation for the Gazebo Gate Villa. It was first built in an Italian style, but then it was rebuilt in a neo-baroque style in the early 1900s. And yeah, this is the baroque style. These days it's a state-owned cultural memorial building. And it's awesome! I love how it looks. All the details are so cute. Adorable house. This is the absolutely amazing building of the Nordic Museum, built by Arthur Hazelius between 1889 and 1907. Arthur Hazelius is also the guy who started Skansen, an amazing open-air museum over in that direction. So this guy Arthur, in 1872, he started collecting items for a Scandinavian ethnographic collection, and it became really popular. The collection grew and more people came to see it, and eventually founded the Nordic Museum Foundation instead, and had this place built. The concept they had for this building was a Nordic Renaissance castle. They sure succeeded. It's amazing. I love this building. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at some of the beautiful buildings you can find in Stockholm. So like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.